Hello, I'm Kate Chapman. I'm the executive director of the Humanitarian OpenStreetMap team, or HOT, who you've already heard about a couple times today. I'm going to talk about an exciting launch of a project that's starting today. Uh, but first, I need to go back to 1854 to give you some background. So this is John Snow. He was a physician in London. And there was a large cholera outbreak during that time. And he believed it was coming from bacteria in the water, or from the water as opposed to bad air, which was the normal belief then. So he was able to map the pumps in the cholera cases to show they clustered around one pump on Broad Street. But imagine if those roads that he lined up the cases and the pumps to weren't there. This is the situation today sometimes, but today we do real-time crisis mapping. How do you create a map if you don't have that base of where you're putting things? We really do still have bl blank spots. It's sometimes because of technical reasons, legal reasons, or capacity reasons. Maybe the data is just very out of date. So we're looking towards how we can solve this project problem. This is through the Missing Maps project. Perhaps you've already seen a little information about it, uh, but today's our official launch. Uh, it's a partnership between the American Red Cross, the British Red Cross, Doctors Without Borders UK, and then my organization and community, the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. And we believe by working together, we can help improve these blank spots. Uh, we're aiming to map the most vulnerable people and help put them on the map. Our short-term goal in the next two years is to map 20 million people in uh, poor and vulnerable places around the world. So there's core ethics behind this. One is that we're open. Open source, open data, open collaboration. Second, we're respectful. We're respectful of local communities. Thirdly, which actually goes under respect, those communities have a right to local access and contribution to that data. And so we're doing this through a three-step process. First, remote volunteers help digitize satellite data. Second, we work with local communities to add those details you cannot visualize from space. Thirdly, responding organizations can use that information. Here's a look at what step one looks like. These are volunteers in London a couple weeks ago looking at satellite data and contributing to OpenStreetMap to add the basic roads and other infrastructure. This is step two. These are people from the University of Lumbumbashi and the Democratic Republic, Republic of Congo. They're using field papers to add more detailed information, such as road names. Thirdly, response. This is the Red Cross after Typhoon Haiyan using OpenStreetMap as part of, as Dale mentioned, their damage assessment as, also, as well as logistics. So now I'm going to look at the technology a bit for you. Uh, core to this is the OpenStreetMap Tasking Manager. Uh, it's at tasks.hotawesome.org. And this is a microtasking platform that allows individuals to take a square and say, I'm going to map this area. Here's one of the OpenStreetMap editors. This is the editor at openstreetmap.org. It allows you to visualize satellite information, trace over things like roads or buildings, and then save that to OpenStreetMap. So then there's the field work again. So once again, this is uh, in Lubumbashi, uh, university students and also staff from Doctors Without Borders adding those detailed information, such as information such as infrastructure data, like the name of a hospital, street names, those sort of th sorts of things. So this is a big task, and you can help us. Uh, one of the most simple things to do is sign up for an OpenStreetMap account and begin mapping. Uh, these, f these field trips, uh, they're not free, uh, so donations are always an option. And thirdly, you can host a mapathon. Uh, working together, we have great tools for mapathons. Here's one of our tabletop information signs that walks through all of the steps to signing up and starting to contribute. So if you have a lot of volunteers, it helps you organize them. Maybe there's a particular part of the world you're passionate about. As I said, there's still plenty of blank spots. Maybe you'd like to join us. Um, this is something you can do from your own home. If you're an NGO and have a project somewhere where having base map data would help, you can certainly join. We're working together, uh, both small organizations such as mine and large international NGOs, such as the Red Cross and Doctors Without Borders. By working together, we can really put the most vulnerable people in the world on a map 
for better outcomes. Uh, go to missingmaps.org or contact me directly. Thank you very much.